Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my absolute pleasure to chair this closing session of the summit. I am Nicholas Steedman, and I am acting Deputy Chief Medical Officer for Scotland. And as Gottfried has outlined, this session will, will mark the closing of the summit and the handing over of the declaration and the summit to those who will take the baton forward. I want to thank you all for staying for this final session. It will uh, run quite swiftly because we do want to get away on time. And it will consist of initially some expert reflections on what we've seen here over the last three days at the summit, followed by the Glasgow Declaration and the handing over of the Declaration and the summit. I will draw your attention to the cards on your table, which you will find, with the Glasgow Declaration. Uh, and hang on to these. You're going to need them when we have the exciting interactive part at the end where you all get to get your photograph taken on the stage with uh, good stage management and a lot of Scottish luck. So without further ado, I'd like to begin this session, um, first of all, really by giving uh, both Gottfried and uh, Charles our... Uh, our ears for their expert reflections on what they've thought of the summit over the last uh, three days. Um, following that, I'm also thrilled to have on our panel both Moira Washington from Waverley Care here in Scotland and Carlos Varaldo from the Grupo Optimismo, um, who are civil society representatives and patient advocates, and you'll see more of them later. So, Gottfried, if I can come to you first. I know you'll have a lot to say on this. Um, what are your feelings about uh, the summit, how things have gone over the last three days? What are the big things that have stood out for you? Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for being with us. Um, first of all, the, and, and this is not just my personal reflection. We met with the WHO team, and actually you will have noticed that we are here with a large team. There is 20 WHO staff here, and we really reflected together on, on how well did we do, what, what came out of the summit. And the, I'm presenting sort of our collective thoughts here. Uh, clearly one thing that I think we all agree is the momentum is building up for hepatitis. It is really not what we saw three years or five years ago, the momentum is really much stronger. We heard countries speak, uh, we had a lot of commitment from countries, uh, some at the highest ministerial level, which is obviously very encouraging. We heard some concrete plans already and some thoughts on the, on the way forward. Obviously, we have to take full advantage of this momentum. Plans are just plans. They need to be implemented, and, and clearly we need to, to move forward. But I'm, 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 I just want to express my gratitude for governments to be so candid, you know, to really tell us where they are, where they're not are, what their challenges are, or how much money they will need. I, I think that is quite unique and, and, and uh, that, that's great. Second, and uh, this is also to be quite open, I think we all agree that we are just scratching on the surface. You know, there is a lot more that needs to be done coverage levels of the key interventions that we all know, with the exceptions of hepatitis B uh, vaccination, are appallingly low. And that includes the obvious ones like treatment, but it also includes harm reduction, etc. So clearly, uh, we have to get the coverage up and uh, we have to get going. We also, another observation heard that some countries, and obviously the epidemiology, the country characteristics are quite different from countries to countries, the income level, et cetera. But this is really the moment for countries to think comprehensively and also to think big. And some of the countries just really focus on one element, and that's maybe only treatment. Some other countries are really just focusing on vaccination, uh, and that's fine. But I think that's also really the opportunity to think comprehensively and say, we need to prevent new infections as much as we need to take care of those people who need treatment and, and, and care. So, so I think it's really an appeal to, 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 to look into this comprehensively. The fourth point that uh, I, I think is so encouraging of this meeting, and that's the strong voice of the community and the, the strong participation of the community organizations and the patients network, civil society. And, Again, we have learned it from HIV as many other things. Without your voice, without your participation, without governments creating the space for you to be part of all steps, 
it's not going to be sustainable. And we just mentioned the word sustainable. It's not going to fly. So, you know, Charles always tells me, uh, oh, we have 200 patient organizations and all these people out there. And I was like, I haven't seen them, you know. But this was, for me, the f a real eye-opener because suddenly so many of you are here and so many of you were uh, I was able, we were able to engage with. It was absolutely fantastic. What we just had in the, first, in the previous session, and again, just to be quite frank, the international solidarity, however, uh, and the international community is still lagging behind in putting some, whatever it is, dollars, euros, uh, RMB, uh, realis uh, on the table. Uh, we will need to be collectively making that case better with better data and we need to make it uh, strategically, wisely, but loudly. And uh, again, uh, that's something uh, uh, we need to be optimistic about, uh, but we also need to be smart about. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very encouraged that this group is, uh, has received, I believe, the strategy well and also the global targets well. Please, these are not yet approved. These are not yet endorsed by the various ministers of health who will all meet in May next year and will have to endorse it. And by endorsing it, have to make a commitment to actually taking action in their countries. So please, go home, be messenger for this. You need to say, I've heard about these elimination targets. I believe they are feasible, and I believe we can do them, etc." So you need to please individually be messengers and saying, uh, these targets are fine. We can eliminate it. We can get over this. Overall, I think it's been a very positive meeting. The energy, the interaction that we saw, the, the optimism that, that has prevailed, despite the challenges that we all know, I think it certainly has been inspiring for me, I know for the whole WHO team, and I sense for most everybody here, and, 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 and I really hope that I'm right with these assumptions. Last point, for WHO, for, 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 from a WHO perspective, please do count on us. Our capacity is uh, still somewhat limited. We are still working on in, in, in beefing it up. Our resources for hepatitis are still limited. We are doing everything to get more money ourselves to be more helpful to you. But we are committed to this. This is a priority for us in WHO. Uh, you have seen a large delegation here. You have seen colleagues from all our regional offices that should di will directly work with you in countries. You have seen people from other departments in, in, in Geneva. Uh, we really want to create a, a global movement, and certainly one that is also within WHO uh, very strongly in, in, in supporting you all. Last but not least, big word of thanks. Big word of thanks to our hosts. I think, uh, really, I've got to lots of meetings and the, the hosted, but I'm saying it with, 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 uh, from, from the heart. You have been a fantastic host. Uh, you have been providing a lot of support to, to this meeting in, in all the preparations. Uh, you have really made it uh, fantastic for all of us. I, I, I want to thank you all who, who, who were involved. Uh, Nicola, yourself, of course, but I really want to say a very special thanks to uh, a person who has been given a, a lot of support, and that's Dr. David Goldberg, who has been really in all the calls and has been really relentlessly and tirelessly supporting us. Uh, thanks go also, obviously, to our partners, the World Hepatitis Alliance, Charles, Raquel, the whole team, Alex, uh, it, you have been really fantastic partners in, and, and, and brothers and sisters in crime here. Uh, and uh, it's, been, it's been, I think it's going well. MCI, uh, those uh, gentlemen who, I guess the, most of you were gentlemen, are running around there. You have been helping us quite substantially with, with the organization. It's been a fantastic conference organization. And I want to thank the, uh, my team, the WHO staff. I really, I'm glad that we were all able to come. I hope we were all uh, reaching out to you. And, uh, and again, as I said, more to come. So thanks to everybody. Thanks to all the participants.
Thanks, Gottfried, and uh, thank you very much for your reflections and the perspective from the WHO. Uh, the, the gentleman to my right, uh, Charles Gore, needs no introduction, but you will all know him as president of the, the World Hepatitis Alliance. And uh, Charles, I wonder if you might give us some of your thoughts on, on things you've heard over the last few days, your feelings and your reflections, both personally and from the WHA point of view. Uh, thank you very much, Nicola. Um, you know, I'd like to echo a lot of what Gottfried said. Um, but I'd also like to say that, that um, I had the idea for this meeting about four years ago. And one of the reasons that it took four years is that I couldn't completely visualize what I wanted. And consequently, for a close to three years, I was talking to people saying, look, I've got this idea, do you think we could do this? And, and people go, I don't really understand what you're talking about. Um, and obviously this is partly my failure of communication, but also I said partly my failure to really kind of visualize this. And what that meant in practical terms was that we had only just a bit over a year to organize it. And that meant that everyone involved in it really, really had to work hard. Um, and I'm so grateful to all the people who put so much into it. Um, our, our partners, uh, Glasgow Caledonian University, um, who provided funding and, and personnel, uh, all the wonderful volunteers in their blue t-shirts, uh, all um, medical students at the university. Um, Health Protection Scotland, who gave a huge amount of time, and as Gottfried said, uh, David Goldberg in particular did just a tremendous amount. And in fact, a, lo a lot of their resources, people were taken you know, from other jobs to kind of concentrate on this. And that also applies particularly to WHO. You know, I'm just so grateful to the, the huge input they put into this. And uh, I feel in a sort of way a bit like a bowler, you know, it sort of dragged resources. But on the other hand, that's wonderful because actually hepatitis has been so short of resources that it's wonderful to have had that, that commitment from WHO. And of course, the Scottish government. One of the other reasons that it took so long to organize this meeting was that we really needed a host country. And for a variety of complicated reasons. We were looking far and wide about somebody who might host it. And actually, only at the last minute did it, it Scotland seem like a perfect choice. And of course, the moment we went to Scotland, they were just welcomed this whole thing with, with open arms <coughs> and actually really got the concept immediately. So I'm incredibly grateful to, uh, to Scotland for doing this. And I hope you felt the kind of warmth of the Scottish welcome, and I hope you particularly enjoyed the, the, the dinner on Friday. Oh, sorry, Wednesday. Um, That's obviously how Yeah, I'm beginning to, yeah. it's all beginning to, to blur. Um, as I say, you know, I had, I had some problems really visualizing what this meeting, you know, what, what it was about. And then I realized over the last three days, this is exactly what I'd failed to visualize. This is exactly what I wanted this meeting to be. And I'm kind of a, a great believer in, in, you know, the current trend towards peer information, peer working, peer education. And I hope that this has sort of delivered that. The fact that we can get the community here with governments, with WHO, that we can <coughs> learn from each other's experience. <coughs> You know, I, we really saw that in the, the two days we had before this where just our, our member groups got together and how, for the very first time, just so incredibly important for them to share their experiences in, uh, across the world. And actually, one of the things that I was really struck by was in the plenary sessions on, on Wednesday was the people getting up to ask questions or make comments. It would be, oh, I'm from the Gambia, I'm from Indonesia, I'm from France, I'm from... It really, I, I almost felt like we might have choreographed it to give this kind of global feel to it. And that's one of the things that really stood out for me. This has been a world summit. And I hope that as we go forward, what, what's been built here, that particularly the working relationship, I hope, between 
civil society and government can be taken forward out of this room into the development of national plans. But I also hope that, that relationships built between governments will help them with a whole range of things, with developing national plans, with, with price negotiation for uh, diagnostics or drugs or whatever, and also that civil society will be able to work much more closely together to provide some kind of real global advocacy voice. Because I think it was very clear from the last session that funding is an issue. And I personally believe very strongly that it is the global advocacy voice that is going to make the funding possible. And without it, it will not be possible. So again, I want to thank all the people who were so instrumental in putting this on, and in particular, uh, uh, MCI and the, the team and the staff at the, uh, the World Hepatitis Alliance who, who just really worked beyond the uh, call of duty. And of course, particularly Alex, um, who I'm sure you've all got to know. Um, he stands out for kind of three things. He's incredibly organized. He's totally unflappable, and he's the tallest person in the room. Um, and it, which has been a real help, because it's like, I need to speak to Alex. Ah, oh, I can see Alex. Um, <laughs> but of course, most of all, you know, uh, I want to thank you all for coming, because ultimately, at the end of the day, it's you who make it. Um, so thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much, Charles. And uh, at the risk of this sounding like an Oscars acceptance speech, I do also want to echo my official thanks to a number of partners who have made this summit possible and the huge success that I, I feel it has been. The first of these has to be to the World Health Organization. And I think you'll all agree that uh, Gottfried, as an ambassador, has, uh, has been particularly impressive and has worked tirelessly, one of the hardest working men in, in hepatitis, I think. Uh, we also have the benefit, of course, of the World Hepatitis Alliance. And although I'm terribly sorry that Charles seems to have lost two days as a result of the dinner, that probably suggests it was quite a success. Uh, but he too has, has worked far beyond the, the call of duty in making this summit a reality. So Charles Gottfried, thank you both uh, from the bottom of our hearts in Scotland for everything you've done. Following on, and, and not for any reason other than that that's the way that I've listed them, we also want to thank Glasgow Caledonian University as a, as a co-partner and Health Protection Scotland who work very hard both nationally and internationally to, to make some of the uh, enormously important data available which we've used at this summit. And you've already heard what a, a key part Professor David Goldberg has, has played in the, in the organisation of this summit. Finally, I would like to particularly thank the Summit Organising Committee as a whole, who have worked behind the scenes uh, absolutely, uh, seemingly effortlessly, but there's been a lot of activity under the surface that has made everything run incredibly smoothly. So particularly, again, Charles, who, as one of the, the spearheads of the Organising Committee, has put so much work into this, and also Gareth Brown, my colleague from Scottish Government, who has, again, worked incredibly hard and stayed very low profile, Gareth, that's been noticed but you're thanked nonetheless. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, begin the next part of, of this session, first of all by, uh, by echoing some of Charles's thoughts and, and really saying that uh, this has been a, a genuinely international collaboration. And although we in Scotland, I think, and I hope are seen as international leaders in some of the work on hepatitis, I certainly have found over the last three days that we have a great deal to learn and we continue to learn from our international partners. And I suppose my final thoughts on the summit are that we all have our part to play and that we can all be champions. Uh, whatever our situation in terms of the fight against hepatitis and nowhere feels more passionately about that than, than Scotland, rest assured. So with that, I would like to move us on to probably one of the most important parts of the summit. And I'm going to invite Moira Washington from Waverley Care to take to the podium to read the final Glasgow Declaration on Viral Hepatitis. Thanks, Moira. 
Glasgow Declaration on Viral Hepatitis. Because there are 400 million people living with hepatitis B or hepatitis C infection with no country or region unaffected. Because there is a lack of global awareness and most persons with hepatitis remain undiagnosed. Because 1.4 million people die every year from complications of viral hepatitis, yet most of these deaths can be prevented. Because there are highly effective measures to prevent new hepatitis B and C infections and highly effective treatments that can suppress hepatitis B virus, replication and cure hepatitis C infection. Because universal access to prevention, testing, diagnosis, care and treatment is a human right and promoting access to and affordability of these services is the responsibility of all stakeholders. The participants of the inaugural World Hepatitis Summit believe it is possible and desirable to set a goal, the elimination of both hepatitis B and C as public health concerns. We therefore call upon governments in all jurisdictions to develop and implement comprehensive funded national hepatitis plans and programs in partnership with all stakeholders and in line with the World Health Assembly Resolution 67.6 and in collaboration with the World Health Organization to define and agree on realistic yet aspirational global targets for viral hepatitis prevention, testing, diagnosis, care and treatment. Thank you very much, Moira. If you stay where you are, I'd now like to ask uh, Carlos Faralda from the Grupo Ottimismo to greet Moira on stage and to uh, officially take over the Glasgow Declaration, symbolizing the handover of the summit to Brazil.